let's move into the more traditional media space and uh, the challenges of the newspaper world. Um, and Alan can uh, share with us what's happening at News Limited. Um, you know, obviously the, the New York Times is, uh, has, uh, has made the paywall work, possibly. Um, 670,000 people paying um, to, uh, to be a subscriber to the Times Online um, is not a bad number um, in the couple of years that they've been at it. Um, tell us what's happening at News Limited. Sure. Well, um, first of all, I'd say, uh, to Andrew's point, um, paid content's nothing new. We've had people have been paying for journalism for, yep. for 200 years now, so let's, let's not confuse the discussion around a, a channel or a platform and, and journalism itself. Um, and, you know, we're probably, uh, at News Limited, we still believe there's a lot of energy left in, in newspapers. We sell 10.5 million newspapers a week, so there's life in newspapers for some time to come, particularly around weekend newspapers, particularly around Sunday newspapers. So, but no one's pretending for a minute that that, that, that business model is not, is, not under some, is not under some stress. And uh, we, uh, our company, News Corp, announced... Uh, three years ago now that we were going to charge for, for our digital content. You can't have a business model where you, you charge for the content over here and you say it's for free over here. So we, everyone, everyone realises that. The challenge has been what is the model that works for charging for digital, for digital content. Um, at the time when we, when we moved the Australian to a, to a, to a subscription model, the, b the best model around at the time was the kind of the Gold Pass premium content model whereby you paid for access to, a, to specific content. We've kind of, the world's moved on a bit from that now, I think. Um, while that's been very successful, and the Australian has something like 50,000 plus digital subscribers, um, I think the industry is now migrating towards the metered model that, that you mentioned, and that's the model that we're now rolling out across our, our metropolitan mass heads. We've launched that in Melbourne, Sydney, this week in Brisbane, and we'll roll it out across the rest of the country in the, in, in the weeks to come. The reason we like the metered model is because it exposes people to some of your content. It gives them a chance to experience that content before they have to register. Um, so, and results so far, good. It, it is challenging. No one's suggesting that... that um, that, that that kind of approach, the metered model, is the silver bullet, the answer to all our problems. We kind of we kind of know that. It's a part of the jigsaw. It's a part of it's a part of the answer. But we know we also know that the a sustainable digital business in the future needs other sources of, of, of revenue. And you mentioned transaction e-commerce. That's obviously going to be part of it. Um, I think micropayments are interesting. Steve Jobs, God bless him, got the world used to micropayments. A lot of people said that. People would never pay 99 cents for this or that. Well, they are. I think that there's a, a micropayment model around around journalism. I think there's some other interesting things. I think there's pay-per-view. And if you look at what's happening in people's homes and the way that um, media is converging towards one screen, I think uh, pay-per-view is an opportunity for us as well. And then there's um, there's uh, other other possible sources of revenue around licensing, licensing our content, slicing and dicing it if you like, selling it in different ways. There's native advertising, which is kind of an, an interesting concept too. So there are, there are multiple affiliate revenue streams. It's not just about whether, whether something's behind a paywall or in front of a, of a payroll. And I think it's a, the whole industry is kind of um, maturing in that, in, from that point of view. I wouldn't get too focused just on, on subscriptions. The other, good, the, the other good thing about subscriptions, though, and, and registration is that we're getting to know a whole lot more about our, our Audience, consumers, yeah. consumers, and that is absolutely critical because we are in the business, we have to be a data-driven business, we have to be an insight-driven business, and one of the, the big things that's held us back in the past is that we actually don't know who our customers are yeah. in the newspaper world, and now we're getting a whole lot more understanding so, about them. So do you see that, like creating models around the, the building community, um, you know, possibly moving into events and... I think, I, think, I think what we're seeing from that is that we're getting, we need to be at the point where we understand the type of content a particular segment wants and what time of day they want it on the, on the platform and the device that, that, that they want to access yeah. it. And that's the level of sophistication we need. You add to that targeted advertising, transactional advertising, whatever. That's, that's the kind of the model, I think. Great. And to my esteemed colleague on my left, um, who started his days in, on the Farnborough News <laughs> and uh, writing about the, the biggest pumpkin, or 
something along those lines. It was all 50th, <laughs> it was golden wedding anniversaries <laughs> and 100th birthdays. And yeah, yes, exactly I bet you right. went along and took the photos and wrote the story. Oh, well, back in that day, of course, there was plenty of, uh, there was plenty of budget. There were photographers. <laughs> <laughs> so the model that you're, the little world that you're living in now, you've built a, uh, a little mini media empire here. And, uh, and I guess, you know, you've published magazines, um, you've worked on newspapers, you've built websites, um, and now you're running very successful events. Um, where is the future of quality journalism in the space that you're living in at the moment? And I suppose the first point to make is that, you know, ev everything that myself and the, you know, the, the rest of the kind of the sort of senior team within the Mumbrella team has learned, we've learned working within the traditional press. You know, the, we, that's where we picked up the skills we hope, hopefully apply. So what it feels now is all we're really doing is applying some very basic journalistic and publishing rules to a new environment. Um, so for us, everything we do about is building up a, a community that we connect with and then finding ways of making money around connecting other people to those people. So, you know, sometimes that's advertising, you know, display advertising, whatever. Um, we launched a directory called The Source, which is a sort of um, uh, directory of, you know, if you worked in a, at a media owner and wanted to know um, who holds a particular account. Um, that's our data play, for mm -hmm. instance, you know. So that's another vertical, this thinking that, okay, we're really we're just another B2B publisher, you know, that happens not to do a print publication. So, mm -hmm. you know, we do a website, we do a daily email, um, we do events, we do awards, we do conferences, but at the heart of it is trying to connect with our readers in such a way that we help them do their job better and in their careers. And then within that, there are a number of different ways of connecting with that audience and helping other people do it. And as simply as, as that, if you try and do that in an authentic way, then um, you, you can build a model around it. Now, we're lucky that we have an audience that a lot of people want to talk to that's not always the case, mm. you know, so this wouldn't work in every vertical, but uh, for us it's a vertical that, you know, we have lots of people in this room that lots of other people would like to market to, so we've got a model. So basically the traditional B2B model, it's just working on many platforms? Yeah. yeah. 